Yes, uh, I, I think you know. First of all, Denmark has a long history uh, of fin class. You know, fin selling. We got Elstrøm, we got Lasse Jordnes, we got uh, Jonas uh, and Stig Vestergaard. Not to to forget him. So you know, I think you know at heart, uh, fin selling in Denmark is 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 very close uh, related. And a um, couple of years ago, you know, we we saw this that it's not that we do not like going south, but on the other hand, we also think we have a very good venue in Aarhus to be sailing. It's not just hit the corner. It's, uh, you know, very demanding, uh, normally quite changing in conditions. Uh, and then we uh, we contacted Aarhus Sailing and said, would you like to uh, to go for a Gold Cup? And they luckily said yes. So we made a bid for 2025. And uh, then this answer situation came up and, you know, we contacted them and say, you know, uh, how do you like to, to move one year forward? And they say they will be happy to that because it suits uh, very well their, their schedule as number one. And secondly, you know, uh, we could join it with uh, what is called the Aarhus uh, Festival, which is basically taking place in that week where we are sailing the Gold Cup, meaning that there will be a lot of parties, music, uh, art, uh, whatever. So you can also take your better or worse half, depending on the situation. And they will also have quite a party for that week. I, I think, you know, we can expect anything uh, from, you know, not exactly light winds uh, and not exactly gale conditions, uh, but, uh, you know, anything anything in between there, I would say the normal range will be from between 8 and 16 knots. There is always some current and the primarily wind direction is from west, so expect uh, quite some uh, wind shifts. And uh, yeah, we, we had our Danish championship a little north of that one, which is basically the same uh, weather uh, two years ago. And, you know, we had anything from uh, from tw from 40 from forty knots at some point in time when we were reaching back home to, uh, to, to you know, to six knots. So, uh, you know, it was in, in, in late August. So, I mean, one week more or less uh, won't be that one. We weather will be normally, you know, around 20, 20 degrees uh, it will be dark uh, quite quite soon. Uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, you know it's 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 a bay, so there's also some current going <clears throat> in and out. So you know, um, as I said, it's not just about you know hitting one corner and then go for boat speed. You have to uh, you have really to be vigilant and look out of the boat. It is not easy. On the other hand, I also think you know that it will offer conditions for everybody to excel. It it will not. You know, it will not just be uh, one one condition. Normally, you know, you have to be a very good all round sailor to uh, to 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 prevail uh, in Aarhus. The other thing is also uh, that uh, in in the Danish class when we're having the Danish nationals, uh, we are always having the same pro, uh, which was the one that was on the Finn class uh, in in eighteen when we had the last uh, Finn Gold Cup there, and uh, we're doing our best to to get him there because we have a very good how shall I say it working relationship with him so uh, normally you know he's quite open for input or anything like that so normally we get quite good races and you know if we both and all can see that you know there's no need for us to laying out there for three hours waiting for wind that most likely won't come then we stay ashore i mean rather that than uh, you know laying out there for for centuries so we i think i think i think we have done that sufficiently in our sailing times we don't need to do that now I'm 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 quite happy. I'm quite excited about it. Uh, you know, uh, it is really nice. Uh, I think we got the right venue. We got the right place, and it will definitely mean uh, a lot of things uh, for for the Danish class. I mean, we are growing. We have you know record number of uh, of memberships, but I think it will uh, draw attention to a few of them. And what we will also do, and it will also be an open invitation to a lot of people, is that we will do some uh, training camps. Uh, you know, might not start this this fall. But, you know, uh, during springtime and, and summer, uh, we have a very good uh, trainer, co sail coach. Mm -hmm. And, my, you know, if a lot of people come at, at a few and it will be, you know, normally it's just per cost. So it, it's quite cheap, you know, less than a, a hundred euro for, for a weekend. And then people can, you know, come and be coached and learn the, you know, the area and that kind of stuff. We, uh, we haven't made the plans yet, but, you know, we have an intention to do so. And once we have that in place, you know, we will, I mean, everybody will be aware of it and shall be more than welcome. Well, we have, you know, we have had uh, over the last many years, we have two kind of, you know, areas. We have one in Vattensbeck uh, and we have one in Drau where we had a lot of people. 
uh, sailing there, but Drauer we kind of got hit by, you know, uh, by, by age, and then we kind of got into Valensbæk, but uh, in Videle, which is in uh, Roskilde Fjord, we got some people starting there, you know, two friends meeting, shouldn't we buy a fin? And then they always had a, uh, you know, a, a spare fin that some of their friends or people passing by could could try. And it was like, you know, I think I think so, to some extent you can call them pimps or whatever because it was the first fixes fry, free. So, you know, once people have tried the fin for once, you know, in, in shallow water, in, in good conditions, you know, they're hooked. So they could sell them a boat and then continue that. that. So I think at the moment they're between 20, 25 uh, boats uh, sailing there. So uh, that's that's how we are doing it. We are still struggling to find another place where we can make a similar uh, nest, you know, kind of have, you know, two or three people who starts up this one and then, you know, invite friends and, and whatever, because I think that's that's the most important part is that you have something that you can relate to and that you have the availability uh, of of the boat. That's one thing. The other thing we're doing quite much about is uh, knowledge sharing, you know, both when we have been out sailing, you know, sailing to the other friends, uh, you know, if you do this or do that, or I'm, I saw that you were doing that, you know, try doing this the next time. You know, and that has, I mean, it, it's part of the fin class DNA, at least here in Denmark, because it really kind of, you know, if, if you're making your competitors faster, you know, they will push you and you will most likely also be faster. So so that's kind of the the idea about it. So we have whole, uh, you know, had sessions, uh, whatever about this. So, you know, if somebody is calling me, how should I do or something like that? You, you know, we, we answer with the best knowledge we got. Uh, we also have a website with a lot. We, we try to kind of put it into paper, a lot of this knowledge we got so that people can learn and hopefully be better uh, better sailors. I sincerely hope so, uh, but you know we have one or two fin sailors in in Aarhus. They have tried to 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 make a nest there, but it's like you know uh, there's only come you know one or two eggs in in that basket, and uh, then it's kind of <laughs> evaporates again. Uh, the the eggs they get stolen or something like that. So uh, I'm sincerely hoping uh, that that will be one of the next uh, nests there. Yes, definitely. We have one good man there uh, who is you know who who is who's, who's quite an avid and good sailor knows a lot of people but you know we we are still kind of you know we're still missing the traction so to speak well that's actually one of the things we're struggling with because youth in our in in at the moment is people under 40 and above 30 so that's you know we are really struggling to that one uh, on the other hand uh, there has just been this week and it's still ongoing a Europe uh, uh, world Cam championship here in Denmark uh, and I can see, you know, there's 10, 15, perhaps 20 Danes participating in that one. And they have a, quite a huge Europe class there. So that's really promising because you have a lot of youth people there. Because if we go to the normal, you know, next step, the OK thing, I mean, it's similar people to sailing the, the fin. It's, you know, old farts like me. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have we have we have to we have to work out uh, a way to find the, the new ones uh, in there. But I think, you know. Just to some extent, uh, you know, the way that a lot of sailing is built up in these days, you know, big people that will excel in the fin is kind of ne not encouraged to sail, uh, <clears throat> you know, during their youth years, unless they start in the keel boat, because uh, normally you, it will uh, it will be the benefit of quite light people. And, uh, you know, so big people, you know, I, I have never been able to fit into a, 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 a an, an optimist in, in, in any way, you know. So, so that's that's the that's the downside of it, of of the way that you have the starting uh, of sailing. I think uh, one of them is uh, you know availability. So you know we have to think about having you know a boat that they can you know a cheap boat that they can either buy or you know borrow. But I also also see here that you know that we now see you know in the old days you know you bought an old wreck. Of a fin, fin, and then you spent the winter uh, renovating it, and then you were happy sailing about that one. And it appears, you know, that people want uh, young people nowadays want to start, you know, a little higher in the hierarchy, so to speak. And that requires some uh, some money that most of them don't have, or you know, want to spend on the uh, on their education, etc. So I think, you know, we have to find a way where you know we have some boats that they can rent cheap or borrow for a period of time until they get sufficiently hooked to buy themselves a boat. And you can see, you know, we have this that foiling is is foiling is in and out. You know, is is the next big thing. You know, the new black. 
But when you see what a sailing a moth, which I think is, you know, the uh, the absolute epitome of that one, what that costs, you know, nobody uh, can uh, can afford that one. I mean, it's similar to to sailing a a regional uh, keelboat. So you know, you can get very well sailing, uh, you know, for less than five thousand euro with mast and sail, etc., in, in an old fin. And I think people just have to understand that, you know, for the first many years, you know, a, an old uh, devotee or something that's similar to that one will not be the limitation to your results. You don't need to go, you know, to the full enchilada with uh, with new boats all over the place. Sometimes it's actually, you know, more forgiving to sail some of the old ones. No, I'm sorry. First of all, you know, uh, the last cup was a local uh, local race we had here in Denmark. Uh, in in we we have it we call it like the most democratic race we have in the year. It sailed uh, south of Copenhagen, and you know the condition is not shifty. There's extremely shifty. So as we say, at any time, at some given time of during the, uh, the race days, uh, you know one sailor, each sailor will either be in front or at the absolute back of the, the race, and normally it doesn't last until the finish line. So, so you know, it's just kind of you know, it's the first first race to kind of you know hone your racing skills, etc. So that was that was my last race. So uh, that's it. About uh, the fin, why I love it. Well, uh, first of all, you know, it's like driving a classic car or something like that. You know, this this man machine integration. You know, when you got everything right, this this hum, the feeling of it. Uh, it also takes quite some time to 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 get that one. And you know, I've uh, you know, I just come to account that I started sailing fin class in '84. Uh, had some 10, 15 years off due to to work and family and ha has been back now again. So, I, I mean, first of all, you know, it, it's the boat, but it's definitely also the people, uh, you know, that we are sailing with here. You know, a lot of people have, you know, have been friends or have been sailing with uh, since, since you know, then and touching up with them. How are things going, et cetera, when you come out there? That's also what I very much like about the class. And this, you know, this open, you know, let's let's all keep, let's all get better. <clears throat> and to some extent, you can say at some point in time, you end up, you know, as a fin sailor and, and not as a human being, so to speak. You know, don't get me wrong, but it's uh, it, it, it's kind of uh, all conquering. And, and that's part of it. And the other part is also, you know, if you want to do this just reasonable well, you have to stay fit. And, you know, so uh, so that's also that's also, you know, a, a good combination. You know, it, it's a good boat, good people. Uh, and, you know, you need to get your exercise in uh, because else you will not be able to sail, you know, two times one hour, just close to whatever maximum you got. Well, I, I, I think we are heading to a place where we will have a lot of more sailors uh, coming in. I think actually the, the limit for the for the class is the availability of boats because I think there's a lot of people who wants to come and join and sail us. You know, you see this search in single-handed and double-handed sailing in big keel boats. And I said, you know, cut out the crap and, you know, uh, sail without the big boat and come and, you know, be an absolutely better sailor and, you know, and come home to your, to a good bed at night instead of sitting there for 24 hours, uh, you know, uh, well, you will be facing fatigue and sailing the fin. But it will not be out, uh, you know, in, in unsafe conditions. So I think that's that's part of it. And I, you know, if we could make all those boats that are standing or not being used, if we could make them available, I think you know we could grow the class uh, even more. <laughs>